Tech Talks. Today, we have the pleasure of Mr. Easy. He started as an entrepreneur outside music and found himself in music. Just, I mean, tell us your story from 440 days to uh, where you are now very, very quickly. Yes, it's been an interesting journey. Um, you know, I finished school, I finished secondary school early, like about 15. I went into gold mining business in Ghana. Uh, and then I would take La Casera to Ghana, introduce it into the market. I'll end up selling that business because fast moving consumer goods business was too much. It was, it was, it was headache for me. So I end up selling that and just focus on, um, uh, the gold mining. But then there was regulation in Ghana saying that foreigners could not engage in small scale mining. And that was artisanal now mining under 25 acres of land. That was when I, it suddenly dawned on me that I am Nigerian, I'm not Ghanaian. And so because I don't, want, I don't want to enter prison, I had to leave the mines. You know, I had this Chinese investor, I had to sever ties with him, you know, and run back to Nigeria and search for angel investment so that I could go back to Ghana and do large scale gold mining. So that was the goal. When coming to Nigeria, I couldn't find funding for gold mining in Ghana. Just imagine like a 20-year-old or 21-year-old boy saying he's doing gold mining in Ghana. I should give him. I think I was looking for $100,000 capital. In those days, right? I hope yeah. You, <laughs> you know, so I um, the only place I could see capital was I saw um, something online called 440.ng. And coincidentally, it was sponsored by Diamond Bank. We're just talking about it. And then I saw Diamond Bank, I saw 440, I Googled Chica Wumbi, I said, ah, this is now way to get money now. So my plan was to, to come up with a tech business, pitch that, get in, work for four years, my vesting period, and then after sell my shares and go back to the mines to do gold mining. So that was the goal. I stayed with 440 NG and we started another company called PhoneTrader.ng. And okay. so on trader.ng, I would then get into the iStore. I would get into MTTN offices, uh, Airtel offices at the point we were in 20, um, uh, MT, yeah, 20 Airtel offices or 20 MTN offices, I can't remember. And we are still in the iStore till today. So we were doing that. And during that incubation period, that's when I learned digital marketing, data mining, iteration how to use tech to scale. In fact, the word scalability, lean startup, how to move lean, how to bootstrap, like all these things. I didn't learn them when I was in... In mining. Yeah, in mining. How did you use leverage on digital to actually determine your resource allocation, where to go? Because yeah. I mean, you could book a um, place. So could... very quickly, yeah. June of 2016, when I decided that, hey, I want music to be what I do now. Like this is the product I want to start selling. I of course started reading. So in reading and reading and reading, I then found out that there was something called music technology. And music tech is big business. It's like maybe a multi-billion dollar industry or more, you know. And so very quickly, I would um, go to the back end because of what I had learned in the incubation program. I would go to the back end and really see on YouTube, who are the people listening to watching this video? Where are they? What are their ages? And so with all that information from the back end, because all these platforms have back ends, Apple Music, Spotify, all of them, I would then look at that and use that to target my marketing and use that to decide where to tour. So fun fact, my first US tour, there was no US tour, nobody booked me. I would went on my back end and I saw that, hey, in, in these cities, in these 10 cities, I have my fans and they are between the ages of this and this. That means they are either in university or they are in college. And then I created an artwork and say, Mr. Easy North American Tour. I put those 10 cities and immediately I post on social media again, which is tech, which um, reduces the barrier to entry. People started reaching out to book. And before I knew it, I had a sold out tour and then more people were booking, more people were booking. In terms of marketing, um, tech reduced the barrier to entry because it created a level playing field. People talk about the, the music industry in Nigeria or the, how yeah. it is unstructured and you know, um, we can't, there's no financing in that business. But you are a perfect yeah. example of where, how you can use the data to, to, to put yeah. structure. I mean, why is it so difficult? Why aren't people jumping on this bandwagon in the Nigerian music industry? 
I think a lot of people are doing that already, but there has to be a lot of communication to all stakeholders. It's not just music. I mean, so you, you are using your data to take decisions. In Nigeria, there are many industries that have data, including banks, but you, they, we yeah. don't use that data to do that. I've seen some of your posts where you actually show people the downloads and everything. And so that it's easy to determine, okay, this guy downloaded this and now you can, we can put a value to that and I can lend to that. Yeah. Value. But you find that other artists are not doing that. Yes, yeah, so they're digital, yeah. they're playing there on Spotify. Yeah. But if you yeah. ask them, what's the value of your business and how do you value your business? Not many know, not many care. They're just playing their music yeah. and they're more concerned about the concerts that they're going to and the yeah. merchandising and, 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 and the big payoff they're going, to, that they're going to have. You know, you're a product of your environment. So now since I came from engineering, naturally I'm analytical. My training has trained me to be analytical. My training before even tech has made me, hey, I'm all about data. I'm all about assembly and disassembly. So that's my, that's my training and that's the unique thing that exists. Now for a lot of artists, they might not have that, but they have somebody in their team, maybe their business manager or somebody in their team who is looking at this or their labels. Because if, you're signed, if, if a major label comes to you and pays you $3 million, it's because they've done the data, they've done the check, they know that you would earn at least multiple of 4x or 5x. If not, they're not going to give you that money. And the record labels, they secure it on your IP. You know, so it, 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 I think the industry is getting to a place where people are waking up, people are understanding. The internet is creating access. So now you can learn. You can learn from somebody's mistake, somebody in America who made a mistake. There are platforms, tech platforms right now, which we are using at Empower to make sure that we can put out music one click to the whole world and we can receive all that revenue and pay out our customers digitally. Everything is tech. So COVID has affected the world. And yeah. as a... As a player in that industry, what are you doing around that and how you how you, how are you substituting that? Right now, people are doing digital concerts. So you're going on Instagram Live, you're going on Zoom and you're performing and people are paying you. You're going on YouTube and you're performing and your fans are paying from Zelle, PayPal. Um, they're paying as you're performing live. So people are raking millions because it's content. When people are at home, what else will they do? They have to go on the internet. They go on the internet, they go on the YouTube, they watch your videos. Your st our streaming numbers have gone up. They've skyrocketed in this time of COVID. When a lot of businesses have been going down, my company, we've employed more people. We've employed more people in COVID time. We did not have to cut anybody's salary. <laughs> Instead, we employed more people to increase our capacity. And this is how tech is affecting our business in creating more opportunities. Finally, Emil, I mean like, so based on what you've seen, your own experiences, what advice would you give to people who are um, wanting to come into this business as, either as artists or either to contribute to that, uh, to that industry yeah. to, to grow it if they're going to be successful? You know, I think people should open their eyes right now and realize that African music is about, African music is the unexplored frontier for music. They've explored Bollywood, they've explored China, Asia, the West, but Africa is the, is the last place to explore. And so it's a gold mine. And so everybody should open their eyes and see. So regardless of the sector you're in, whether you're on the side of the bank or you're on the side of uh, the artist or an investor, this is time to invest in uh, African music. Um, Toti, thank you very much for coming on Tech Talks. It has been yeah. very illuminating. We'll continue the conversation yeah. and, and wish you success.